In this video, we're going to compare Substack and ConvertKit. These are two very good email newsletter services, but they are very different. In most cases, you're going to love one a lot more than the other. So stay tuned because we are going to find out what Substack and ConvertKit do differently, what features they both offer, how much they're going to cost you, and which platform is most likely to be suitable for you. If this video turns out to be super useful for you, make sure to click the like button, share it with your friends, and consider subscribing to our channel. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is the key similarity between Substack and ConvertKit, which is the fact that they both offer you the opportunity to create a paid email list and emails that your subscribers pay a monthly fee to access. Now, that's actually the only real similarity between Substack and ConvertKit. So if you're looking to compare them, I'm going to assume that you're looking to create some sort of paid email list for your subscribers to pay for and for you to make a bit of extra money from the emails that you send. So which one's going to do it better for you? Let's take a look. Now, the first thing I need to make clear is that Substack gives you the opportunity to create a blog and an email list at the same time. Essentially, whenever you're making a blog post, that's automatically going out to your email subscribers. Now, when we take a look at some examples of some Substack blogs here, you're quickly going to notice that the design of all of them is, I say similar, but it's, it's almost identical. That's because there is very little room for customization with Substack blog, and that is the same with the Substack emails and the Substack landing pages, as you can see here almost identical. Now, whenever you land on a Substack blog for the first time, you're going to see a page like this. So it's prompting you to enter your email so that you can be emailed a future post, which is fantastic if you're an owner of this blog, right? And now when you go to put your email address in, you are going to be, uh, see a page like this. So this is giving the reader the opportunity to subscribe to emails. You can choose uh, for uh, a paid subscription or a free one. Now with ConvertKit, we're not making blog posts, but we are sending emails and there is far more of an opportunity to customize what these look like. We'll take a look at all the different templates that are offered with ConvertKit for emails. And if you're really clever, you can make your own from scratch with HTML. Also true of landing pages. We'll see the different landing page options here. Perhaps you're gonna to wanna to create a landing page with ConvertKit uh, where people can enter their email address so that they can subscribe to your emails. Okay, now let's take a look at the features on offer with both Substack and ConvertKit because this is where ConvertKit really comes into its own. You're gonna have the opportunity to send uh, automated emails and email sequence um, segmentation of your audience with Facebook custom audiences or with a whole range of different demographics. Um, you're also going to be able to um, take a look at the analytics, open rates of your emails, what demographic is opening your emails more, all of these things. Now, A-B testing as well of your emails. Now, this isn't really uh, mind-blowing. These are the kind of features which are offered by all of the major email marketing software companies. But with Substack, it's not really designed to do this. OK, you're not going to have the chance to do A-B testing with your emails. You are only going to be able to do segmentation between your free subscribers and your paid subscribers. You're not going to be able to send uh, automated emails or create a, a funnel or anything like that. That's not what Substack is really about. It does have analytics, but they're far more basic. You're only going to be able to see things like open rate, click rate. Uh, things like that. You're not going to be able to dive way deeper like you can in ConvertKit. So what about the prices? Well, the price of Substack is really simple. It's going to be absolutely free unless you do decide to make a, a paid email list, in which case Substack is going to take 10% of your profits. Now, when we take a look at the pricing structure of ConvertKit, you'll see it's a lot different. You've got three different levels uh, of pricing and these go up and up and up the more subscribers you have you see here now on top of this you're also going to have to pay extra for the paid email list feature 
ConvertKit is going to take 3.5% of your profits from that, plus 30 cents per subscriber. Now, that sounds like a lot, but if you see my calculations, which I've done on my handy spreadsheet here, in most cases, this is still going to prove cheaper than Substack. You've got three examples on my spreadsheet here. 1,000 subscribers paying $10. Substack is going to take 10% of your profits, which is $1,000. ConvertKit, the total cost is just over $700. Okay, let's say we scale our business. Now we've got 10,000 subscribers paying $10. Again, Substack takes 10%. That's $10,000. With ConvertKit, you're looking at paying $3,000 less per month. Now, the only real situation where Substack is going to be cheaper for you is if you've got a lot of subscribers, but they're not paying very much. So we see here 10,000 subscribers paying $1 each. Substack's going to take 10%. That's $1,000. But because ConvertKit charges 30 cents per subscriber, you're looking at paying a lot more a month. Now, to conclude, to me, it's quite clear that ConvertKit offers the more comprehensive email newsletter service and as we've just seen in most cases it's going to work out cheaper for you than substack as well really the only scenarios in which you would even consider choosing substack over convert kit is if you're just making a small little email newsletter service perhaps you're not even looking to charge people for it at all or you're looking to charge people just a couple of dollars each. And you do want a blog on the side, but you don't mind it looking basic and the same as every other Substack blog. Then maybe you would consider choosing Substack over ConvertKit. You choose Substack over ConvertKit if you're a part-timer, essentially. But if you're serious about making money with a paid email list, then ConvertKit is almost always going to be the best choice for you. Anyway, hope you found this video useful. If you did, make sure to click the like button, share it with your friends and consider subscribing to our channel. Thanks a lot. Have a fantastic day and goodbye.